Okay, so now let's look at the security market line once again, but vis-a-vis -vis this idea of undervalued, fairly valued, and overvalued stocks. And this is something, or you know, securities, and this is something that you will definitely see on your exam, and they may ask you this in a bunch of different ways. But what I want us to be able to understand is how does this relate to our function or our line, and how could we empower ourselves with our graph to figure out what's actually happening, okay? So with that being said, the first thing that I want, you know, for, for us to be very comfortable with is this idea of our function of the SML. The SML says that K is equal to RF plus beta times the market risk premium. And what we know is that, of course, beta equal to one will give you the market portfolio return. And we know that depending on any given point that we take, we could take beta is equal to 0 0.2, but we could also take beta is equal to three, all these different points will provide to you a different K, right? So based on our independent variable being beta on our horizontal axis, we will be able to get a different K, which is exactly what our return will be, okay? So with that consideration in mind, we want to know, well, what happens, okay, to the price of a security or position vis-a-vis -vis the beta we've incorporated? Okay, and we could do a quick little proof. So let's use beta equals 0 0.2 and beta equals 3. And with these considerations, it'll be very, very obvious to us later on that one is overvalued, one is undervalued, and one is fairly valued. Okay, so really quickly to make it obvious for you guys, and you could write this down onto your formula sheet, you could write this down into your notes, it's something super important, is that we know that a stock or a position will be underpriced if the K you get from your SML line or your SML formula is bigger than the market return, the essentially the market portfolio return. So you know that in that specific scenario, we have a underpriced security, okay? And then vice versa, or just additionally, we know that we have a fairly valued security if the K we got is equal to the market return. Okay, so if our required rate of return is equal to the market return, we have a scenario in which the stock or the position is fairly valued. And then last, but definitely not least, we can look at a scenario in which, you know, K is smaller than the market return. Then we have a scenario that is actually overpriced, in which our required rate of return is smaller than the market return. And in this case, we would say that something is being overpriced. And there's more detail to go through, and we're going to do that through our example, okay? So let's look at three different scenarios in which we're going to get a better feel of what it means for a stock to be undervalued, fairly valued, and overvalued. We're going to take three different points, and we're going to make sense of them in real time with our graph. This is something that you may want to do on your exam. So let's take a random point, call it, you know, right here, point A, and we're going to look at what it says beta, in this case, we'll give it a beta right here and an expected return right here. All right, so we have this. Call this return 20%, all right? And we're going to say that its beta is 0 0.5, all right, for point A. So E or A, all right? So with that being said, what we want to know is, well, how does this compare to our market return? So obviously, our market return will be based on our SML. So whatever is on our SML, which is right here, call it point X, will give us a return versus our return of ERA. Now we quickly see that there's a whole lot of difference between the two. There's this whole area in which R, this is typically what we call our alpha, but we could say that ERA is bigger than ERX. And for that reason, we could say that the stock is actually undervalued. Our stock is undervalued because there are much more returns that are being made by our investors at this point. There are much more returns being made. And this is what we call actually alpha, all right? There are much more returns that are being made over the SML. So this is what we call a point that's being undervalued. But conversely, let us look at a different point. Let's look at a point at which, for example, right here, okay, this is our point, we're going to call it point B, all right, 
and it lies directly on our SML. So that would mean that regardless of whatever you know, math we do, whatever we have as our K, E, will be equal to our ER, B. And that would mean that our stock is fairly valued. And once again, you could definitely run the math and you'll see that it makes total sense. So we have a stock that is fairly valued. Now, the last consideration we're gonna make is let's use, call it orange. We're gonna look at a point that is right here, okay? So you have point C, it's giving you, you know, any, it's giving you something that's small, we'll call it 3%. And you know that that level of beta, so you have a whole lot of beta, you have a little bit of returns, and you know that at that point, for that given level of beta, if you were on the SML, you would have much more returns. In this case, something around 18%, right? So this would mean that you're losing this much, this much value, all right? This much return, that would mean that, hey, you're losing much more returns than what you're actually supposed to get. In this case, we would say that this is totally overpriced. And once again, you could run the numbers and you will see that in practice, this is how you're able to see whether a stock or a position is underpriced, fairly valued, or overpriced. It's very intuitive. You don't necessarily have to do you know, a price example, but what you wanna know is that depending on what our K is vis-a-vis -vis our market return, we'll be able to see, well, hey, is it underpriced? Is it fairly priced or is it undervalued? So I hope this was able to help you out. I hope this gave you a better feel of what CAPM graph intuition is all about, especially related to the idea of pricing. Hopefully this helped.